Um, software for smaller studios dev pipeline. Uh, what, what are your choices, Rick? Yeah, I mean, I, I just, I believe in engines and I've worked in a lot of studios where we've built our own engines. And this was a while ago. This was a little bit before Unity and Unreal were quite the powerhouses that they are today. We built our own engines and there'd be many, many people working on building the engine, updating the engine, improving the engine. And, you know, it was fine. There's a lot of huge studios that have their own engines and they've got full control over them, full ownership over them. But they've also got a lot of people working on them. If you're a small indie studio, just use an engine. It's it's simple. And it, if you don't know which one, then that means you're very early in your process. It means you haven't gone and played around with them and learnt them. So the big ones, Unity and Unreal. If you're an open source person, then Godot as well. If you're 2D, then there's game maker and um construct and and there's there's a bunch but i'm a unity guy unity's amazing there's so much you can do with it it's free until you get to the point where you're making money and then it's okay that it's not free because you're making money um you know it, it's amazing it's great for mobile it's great for um you know great it's, it can do everything pretty well there's great documentation there's awesome courses you can learn unity like the game Rift tv course uh, there's lots of great <laughs> stuff Unreal is also amazing. It's a bit more polished. It's a little bit more particular about how things work. If you're interested in visual scripting, then Blueprints is great. Like, you know, the box, the line, the pull down, blah, 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 blah. you don't have to know the exact syntax of the code. So visual scripting is really cool. Uh, it also uses C++ when you're, when you're getting in there doing more, um, more of the coding type side of things. So um, there's a little bit of a steeper learning curve. Unreal is C++, whereas Unity is C Sharp. And, you know, they're, they're very similar, but C Sharp's a little bit more beginner friendly, I think. Uh, and Unreal's great if you're wanting to really prioritize having a beautiful looking game. I personally think that Unreal, it's easier to get beautiful looking. Un uh, Unity, you can get there. It's just a little bit more work, I think, to get to beautiful looking. Um, as in terms of engines, and then in terms of software, whatever it is that you've been using, you know, if you've been using Blender, keep using Blender. You can totally do that. If you're making a 2D game, then I think A Sprite is amazing, and it's only 20 bucks, so it's pretty easy um, to do to get that. Uh, in terms of source control, you can use Git. I think um, I've used Perforce in in the past. That's I think better. The bigger the team you get on, um, but any sort of Git, I use Source Tree and Git GitLab. I think nowadays, so you absolutely have to have a source control system. And if you're listening to this and you're going like source control, oh, I wasn't sure about that, then go do some research and dig into that. You have to have source control, super important, and you have to use it well. Make sure that everyone knows how they check things out and check things in and the artist doesn't go and break something the night before you're sending out a big build because that's what artists like to do. It's like, oh, I just uploaded every art asset. I thought that'd be a fun thing to do. Oh, I didn't realize that renaming everything would break it. And programmers are like, Argh! so anyway, source control, very important. Um, yeah, so they were the ones that, that I, I use. Um, and engine, yep, and then art, ah, that's... That's most of it. And then in terms of audio, that's a bit of a different beast. I think if you're a smaller indie studio, then you either want to go buy your assets and then get some additional customization, or you work with a, you know, you outsource it and you get an audio engineer to create stuff for you. I don't think you necessarily want to go and wrestle with that yourself. Um, if, you, if you're like, oh, I want to kind of make some sound effects, just go and spend $10 and you'll get all the sound effects you could ever hope for. So, you know, un unless you're wanting something really different, really special, and you go pay for someone to do that, I don't think you need to. But, uh, you know, Audacity is something where you can play around with that and, and clip things and change them and smoosh them a little bit. So, um, yeah, they're most of the, most of the tools. Um, oh, and then in terms of your editor that you use, it's whatever, Visual Studio Code is what we use when we're teaching because it looks the same on Mac and PC. That's the main reason. Um, and then Visual, Visual Studio Community, Notepad++, it's like, you know, those, those things, if you're already a programmer that you've already got something you're using. Um, and then in terms of project management, that's probably another side to touch on. So I've used Trello, I've used Asana, we're using Notion nowadays at Game Dev TV. That's what we, you know, do all of our stuff in. Notion's a kind of an interesting database, meets wiki, meets kind of a bit of everything. Um, so you can use one of those tools for your project management and your task tracking. And then Google Drive is just great for being able, to, being able to save files. You can use Dropbox or Google Drive. Google Drive is really caught up to Dropbox, I think, in terms of the syncing of files, working offline. You don't have to fill up your computer with all this stuff. Um, so that's an option there in there as well. So 
I don't know. Have I missed anything, Grant? Grant, in terms of the that's kind of a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, the obviously the art the art type uh, programs. Uh, I'd certainly go with Blender because it's free, and if you're a small indie studio, then if you're doing the 3D stuff, then go that way. Uh, Critter for um, art assets because again it's free. Uh, GIMP is a good one, but Critter's probably better for um, sprites and things for for your games. Uh, and uh, I suppose uh, that's worth thinking about as well, which I know you have a strong opinion on, don't you? That using asset packs where you can, and like you said about the the music and sound, uh, just get packs and download them. I'm, uh, I'm huge definitely. on that. You know what's really a really good workflow on that is to find an asset pack, but then to be able to modify the asset pack to expand the asset pack. So you might go and you know you find a couple of characters. You're like, these characters are good, but I need ten characters instead of two. So if you've got some skills where you can get into Blender, modify things a little bit, stretch, you know, scale, change the color, and you're like, boom, now I've got, uh, you know, now my sailor is a nurse. Great. Well, maybe it's not quite as easy, easy as that. But now my, you know, my red sailor is a blue sailor. So you can you can get some variety, and you can also customize and change. And and if you're worried about it looking like an asset pack, you can do a little bit of work on it. Uh, I think I really like that approach more than than like the massive amount of time it takes to just build everything from scratch yourself. And that, that's when you're starting out. That's when you're working on your first and second and third and fourth game. At some point, you're going to say, right, our studio has grown up a little bit now. We're starting to get good money when we're releasing our games. Maybe we're looking for some investment. And then you can go for a really particular style. You can really have the, the art in your game stand out because of the construction of it. But in the earlier days, I think it's better to use shaders and filters and you know, apply a little bit of magic to assets, to existing assets, rather than trying to do it completely from scratch. Yeah, definitely. And I suppose it's worth saying that if you've got an artist and a, a programmer, uh, the artist might find the uh, Notion stuff a little bit tricky and the source, <laughs> source tree. Get Are you speaking from experience tricky. there, Grant? <laughs> <laughs> Not at all, no. <laughs> Rick! <laughs> Rick, Rick, I've broken it. GitHub's not working. I can't add a column in this silly program. Oh, you know, and that's it's really interesting. That's a, we laugh about that, but it's an interesting point that um, I personally think you should have as many visual things as possible when it comes to project management and and communicating what's going on with your team. And I know people who are a little bit more programmer focused, they like lists and they like wikis and they like, you know, everything's documented. Someone who's more artistic is like, you know, just show me, I'm gonna be very visual. I, I like the visual. I think it's very important to have some visual, but you need to see what works on your team. And just cause there's three people who like it a particular way and two another way, doesn't mean you, you just have to do it the way of the three. You need to make sure everyone is, is included in that. And artists, they're very visual people just cause that's what they do.